from much is COVID-19 to a different story. We are former Baringo South Member of Parliament. Edward Kiptanui has been hospitalized at a hospital in Nakuru town. The former MP was attacked by thugs at his home in Rongai. Joan Letin joins us for an update. Well, a very good morning to you, Brenda, and good to see you. What we know so far about Elijah Cherutic uh, Kiptanu is that he was attacked on Saturday night by gangsters. Uh, we understand that they arrived at around 10 p.m., and they were requesting for uh, the keys to his safe because they wanted his money, but then he refused to do that. And uh, uh, they stayed there until 2, p 2 a.m. in the night. You can imagine it is past a few hours, and they, are, they were there for over four hours. And and uh, we understand also that uh, the house help was uh, allegedly sexually assaulted by the gangsters. And we also understand that um, they broke into his farm. That is, his farm is at Lengenet in uh, Rongai. And uh, the man allegedly refused to give them what they wanted. So they tortured them for over four hours. And uh, when they left, they left with his suits and uh, some personal uh, belongings. And uh, just to give you a background of who Elijah Cherutich Kiptanui is, He's, uh, he was a former ally of the former president, Daniel Cherutich Arap Moy, and he also served during Kenyatta's time as a former, as an MP, uh, that is around 1974. And uh, we also understand that he served as an assistant minister uh, for water development during uh, Moy's time. So, well, uh, that is uh, the master that we know, Brenda, about this man, Elijah Cherutich Kiptanui. And what we have also... Uh, gathered is that uh, the doctors are saying that he's in a stable condition and uh, we also understand that he was actually attacked using an, an axe uh, on his leg after he refused to give them the keys that they wanted so well um, he's uh, still recuperating at a, a hospital here in Akuru town and we'll be trying to speak to him later on to see if he can give us more details on this but uh, so far that is all we have Brenda. Joanne, um, the former MP's uh, situation is not a new one, especially during this, during this time of uh, curfew. And that is the same questions Kenyans are asking. You know, Thagari, have passed curfew hours. Well, Brenda, that is the question we are also asking. I mean, it was past a few hours, and uh, these gangsters uh, had enough time. I and mean, for four hours, they are torturing someone in his house. And remember, in Akuru also, there have been reports of uh, break-ins after a few hours. We, uh, we understand that so many businesses here in Akuru town, as well as in Molo, uh, there have been so many break-ins, people stealing uh, precious uh, commodities from the uh, shops. So, well, it has been a big question which uh, we really need to understand from the security uh, department because at such a time we expect that uh, when it reaches 7 p.m. everyone should be home but then here in Akuru I think uh, the situation is quite different for them uh, because uh, from what we gathered from Elijah Cheruti is that um, uh, he was saying that it was weird for him because that was 10 p.m. I mean, uh, everyone should be home. But then they managed to enter his home past a few hours. And uh, he was also telling us um, when we spoke to his caregiver, and he was telling us that... Um, uh, when they tried to reach the police, they could not reach them. And up to now, they are saying that they have not even gone there to see him. Uh, so it's an allegation that we are still trying to understand. We will also be speaking to those uh, in charge uh, of Rongai, uh, of Menengai Police Station, that is the OCPD there, so that we can be able to understand what happened, what exactly is going on in Rongai, so that we can give you better updates, Brenda. Thank you so much for that. So now... Deputy President William Ruth